Hello, it's Wendy. Welcome back to my channel at Summer Bay Studio. Today I thought I would do something completely different and sort of give back to the artist community. And my topic is 15 ways for artists to make money. Now when I started painting, I actually started being an artist when I was a young child. Like most creative people, you start out very creative and some somewhere along the way things change and you don't get to follow your dreams and then maybe sometimes you do. And that's what happened to me. I started out very creative and then I studied art in university and then I had a family and put everything aside and then I decided to take up watercolors. So the first thing I want to share, number one, is when you start making art that you're, that you're satisfied with and you feel has some caliber to it, you can sell to your friends and family. And they were my first market, basically. Um, I remember taking a watercolor class at, a, at an art studio and uh, someone came in to just kind of see what, what the class was like and asked to buy one of my paintings. This is a person I didn't know, but I thought, okay, well, I will happily sell you my painting. And then from there, as I, I produced more and more of a body of work, um, my family and my friends all wanted to buy paintings too. So don't overlook the opportunity to sell paintings to your family and friends, because that could be your first and maybe your best market. Now, I have to say though, if you find that your family and friends aren't really impressed with your work or they're not very open to you being an artist, don't let it stress you out because there are, as I'm going to share, 14 more ways you can make money with your art. So number two is art shows. I would suggest starting locally. Um, where I live, it, there's quite a bit of artistic activity and there are art shows every year um, not including COVID years, of course. And it's worth putting your time into having a body of work, presenting, being sure that you've got the rules right, um, finding out what the costs are. There's lots of things to know. So I would say go in assuming that you don't know and then go ahead and find out. And that way your art gets exposure if you can sell at the art show, so much the better. Exposure sometimes is good and sometimes it's kind of a waste of time. But if you're growing as an artist, it never hurts to get more eyes on your paintings or on your sculptures or whatever your medium is. You can find art shows in your area by searching online or by asking local galleries. Or if there are fairs, often at the local fair in the summertime or whenever they have them. Or even trade shows, consumer trade shows, you can get a booth. Craft markets, you can, you can buy booths. And sometimes they're not all that expensive. I have shown my art at, I live in a small town, so I've shown my art at local Christmas market every year. And then in a larger town down the road from where I live, there's also a Christmas market and I've bought a bigger booth or rented a bigger booth and use that as an, a venue to sell my art and have done quite well or at least it's been worthwhile. Okay so number three is galleries. There's working with a gallery is um, a collaboration. So if you think of selling your art as you are the creator and the gallery is the marketing department it gives you kind of a a format for how it works. So when you think of the gallery and you find out that they want 50% of the price of your your work, you might gasp and think, well, that's not fair. But if you think of it as a business arrangement, which it is, then you have to go, well, I have to pay my marketing department, don't I? Because they're doing the work of publicizing their events, of getting people to come in, of handling paperwork, all those things. That's a very very useful service. So if you intend to go in the, the go the gallery route, be sure first you have that a cohesive body of work to show. You don't have to actually take paintings in, at least I never did, um, but you, you should have good photos taken and a binder showing what your work is like 
and the pricing and uh, and a bio about you about what you do and how you do it uh, so that the gallery knows what they're getting also let them know how prolific you are how how fast are you does it take you a year to produce a painting or can you do it in a week can you keep producing because they're in the business of selling art and if you can't produce it they're not going to take you on so um, the other thing I would say is don't be shy about pitching to a gallery. Phone them up. See who it is that you need to talk to or even just walk in and, you know, take your portfolio in your tote bag and ask if they have a few minutes to look at what you've got. And they might say, no, we're not taking anybody, but say, well, you may in the future. So why not have a look now and I'll give you my business card, which you need to have printed, by the way. Because if you're selling your art, you are an art business. That's really important. And then you can just sit down with people. Don't be intimidated. They're just people. So if that's the way you want to go, um, there's just a few steps. And that's, you know, there's a bigger subject involved. But this is just an overview of different ways that you can make money with your art. So number four is commissions. Now, a commission is when someone asks you to paint a painting for them. So I've done several commissions. Um, I've done house commissions, like house painting. People want a picture painted of their house. You think, well, why? But sometimes people love their home and they want to have it on their wall or they want to take it and put it in their holiday house or whatever, or they're moving and they want to remember the old home where they had so many happy memories. Uh, I've also done pet portraits, people who love their pets. That's actually a very good market. Horse portraits, anybody who's into animals of any kind usually loves their animals and they are happy to have a portrait made. And there are different venues that you can go to. If you think outside of the gallery um, mentality, you think, well, okay, I'm great at painting dogs and I love painting dogs. Well, where do dog people hang out? Well, they go to pet stores to buy food for their dogs. They uh, go to dog shows. They, I'm, I'm not in that field, but those are things you want to think about. So think, you know, outside the box a little bit on where to find the customers for what you want. And as far as people portraits, um, the same thing. Go to photographers. They're painting portraits anyway, or, you know, creating portraits. But um, just use your imagination and think, well, who do I know who paints portraits? Or, or sorry, who wants a portrait painted? And um, if you've painted portraits, use the ones that you have as showpieces. So if, for example, I like I've painted a portrait of my daughter and I want to show that I can do that, well, I'm not giving her the portrait, it's mine, but um, I can use that one as sort of an advertising feature. So that's another idea for you for commissions. And, and really it's endless. I've done uh, airplanes, um, people want their pickup truck painted, their tractor, their farm, their children, you name it. There's lots and lots of scope for making money as a portrait painter. Number five, if you like to, to teach at all or like to create courses, creating online courses is currently a really popular way to make money from your art. I'm currently actually putting together a course because I like doing things like that and I have years and years of experience. I actually started painting professionally almost 40 almost 40 years ago, which tells you something about my age, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, experience all counts. So if you're interested in courses and creating courses, one of the things to remember is to figure out who your market is. So if you're medium is sculpture, for example, your market for a course is not a photographer necessarily, or it's it's not um, a mixed media artist. It's someone who likes to work with clay or stone or whatever it is. So you have to narrow down your focus to who the market is and then go looking for that market. And in the same way I mentioned for portraits, you want to look at where those people hang out so that you can target the market directly toward them. 
Number six is in-person teaching. Now, of course, with COVID, all that kind of thing stopped. But people love to take art classes. I even, I mean, I've taken lots and I've been through, through university courses and everything, but I would still love to take an art class. And I have done to learn a different technique or just to be in the milieu of having hanging out with other artists and learning something new. So there's great opportunity in teaching classes. And you can do them through your community center, um, a community art center, um, you can put them on yourself, like rent a venue, do your own advertising. It's really endless. And if you want to take it farther, you can, you can rent your own studio space. Or if you have a studio space, you can use that to bring people in to your studio space and give classes there. And it's a way to make nice chunks of money on a regular basis. So if you're good at teaching and you can... You can create your classes so that they are specific for a, either both both a market and a need or a technique. You can teach separate classes for all these things. So, for example, I could teach a class on dry brush watercolor technique. And it might only be an hour long or it might be half a day. But you can make good money doing that. And I have done that. I've taught drawing classes and watercolor classes over the years. Number seven is, this is going in a little bit different direction now. Uh, this would be book illustrations. And this is something that I've done because I've worked with authors. And I've, I'm, I've actually, I'm an author myself. I've written several books. And I've also done other people's books. So illustrating in a book is um, a, a really good field to get into if that's the kind of work you like to do. With regard to book illustration, we tend to think of children's books, and definitely there's huge markets there. For children's books, you would want to approach publishers or and or self-published authors if, you, uh, if you're not illustrating your own book, but want to be the illustrator for someone else's book. So you have to do a little bit of research around that. But also, uh, besides those kind of books, there are also textbooks, um, trade publications, all kinds of things. Uh, here's an example of one that I did. It's This is the um, adrenal gland in a medical book. So try to look beyond your first thought and I think you'll find that there are lots of opportunities. Number eight is logo design. Now a lot of, des a lot of logos are designed in in graphics rather than by hand art but if you're good at that that's great and that's a real opportunity for you but you can also do uh, handmade art for logos and I'll show you a couple that I've done this was a watercolor painting and I'm just covering up some of the information here also, this one is a watercolor painting. So that gives you an idea of the th different things that you can offer if you do that kind of design work or artwork. To get into that, what you would want to do would be um, approach graphic designers who aren't artists. You could also um, just get into the business world and go to networking meetings and that sort of thing so, you, so that you, need, you do neat, good grief, so that you meet people who would need that kind of service. Number nine is book cover design. Now this is a field that is very specific and you would need to do some research on what what is what's going on in the cover design world. There are ways to get into that market through uh, dealing with self-published authors for one thing and also approaching uh, publishing companies with your art portfolio. But before you begin, I would recommend that you go to a big bookstore and look at all the covers of the, the bestsellers and the popular ones and whatever genre is your favorite or whatever your artwork fits. For example, if you do Western art, look at the Westerns and see what's on the cover. They're not all photographs. Quite often there's artwork involved and also uh, the romance genre. A lot of it is has some painting involved, and there's really a huge 
opportunity there for using your artwork in cover design. And I've done that myself. I've actually written books and edited uh, um, clients' books, plus done the cover design and the interior design and everything else. And there's actually pretty good money in it. So I would recommend, if that interests you, to have a look at that possibility. Number 10 is uh, you can design papers for designers. And there are several sites on the internet where you can upload them and you can just sell them over and over the, again because they, um, a designer can buy the rights to use it for a project. And I'll give you an example, a couple of examples actually. Um, I've been working on doing some, some small journals and I hope this isn't as bright as it looks. And so I designed some papers and some pieces to go in it for, for example, this is one of my designs, which I did in watercolor and ink. And I did papers to go with them, which are uh, like this design. So this is my flower and twig embellishments. I hope that's in focus. That's a whole series of paper designs that I created. Here's another example, this one here. And like I said, you do a whole series that it coordinates and people in who love to journal and who buy art to create other kinds of graphic design, this is the same again, the uh, flower and twig embellishments, will can buy that then and use it. So I have done that myself with a few different things. And uh, let me just show you an example of that. This, this series is one that I designed, but I didn't do all the artwork for it. So here's one of the sheets of paper that I turned into a book cover. And here's another one that's an interior cover or in some interior pages. Now these are all pieces of artwork that I bought from other artists and designers. And then I, because I do graphics as well, I put them all together to create my own things. So if you can can create things like that, then you can sell them online on sites that sell those. And I'll try and put a list of that below so you can just go straight there and look at it. Now, that was number 10. Number 11 is licensing your art to companies or giftware companies or fabric or decor companies. And this is a, a kind of a really different way to, to make money from your art. It's it requires contracts and plans and portfolios and all that kind of thing. But I've done that myself, and I'll show you a couple of examples. This is one that I, I licensed to a giftware company. It's, it's a, a mug with a little lid and a tea strainer in it. Uh, here's another one that I licensed to the same company. That's also a mug, obviously. You can also license your paintings for art prints. And that, again, is a contractual agreement. And you, you get a percentage of the sales. And it depends on what it is and where it's being manufactured and all those kind of things. But you set those things at the contract stage. And the way there are different ways to get into those. It's, you know, every company has different different rules and requirements for pitching to them or for submission. Uh, the way I did it was I had a gift store at the time and I just took my portfolio and looked for companies at the gift shows. I would go to the wholesale gift shows and then ask around and see who might be interested. So I talked to different companies, just walk into their booth, said I'm an artist and I've got a portfolio here for designs that might work good on some, work well on some of your products. And I wondered if you would like to sit down and have a look at them. And that's how I got my licensing deals. So I think I showed you, oh, I was showing you this. So this is one of the pieces. I'm trying not to let the light hit that wrong. This is one of the pieces that was made by a giftware company and manufactured elsewhere. I didn't have to do that work. And then I got a percentage for the use of my artwork. And they did a, an entire series with these. Here's um, Trivet and a Coaster 
and there were mugs and all kinds of things. So that's another way that you can make money with your artwork. So if you're looking at the bedding market, for example, you might get sheets and towels and shower curtains and pillowcases and table runners or tablecloths. There's all kinds of things like that. And there are different ways to get into that market. It You can also go to licensing shows, which can be very expensive and you actually need a pretty comprehensive portfolio of work to show. So you have to be prepared for the cost of that. The biggest one is in New York. I don't know if there's still one in in Las Vegas. I haven't been to the New York one, but I have been to the Las Vegas one. And booth prices are quite high, And but there's also opportunity there. So if you're prepared and you're ready to make that investment, you can do very well that way. Now, that was number 11. So that you can go um, with licensing. If you look around you, you can see things that have been licensed and somebody has created the art for. For example, uh, here's a fridge magnet that I bought in Key West. Well, some artist designed that and probably licensed it to whoever manufactures those and is making money at it probably still. And I've had that for several years. Number 12 is creating your own pattern designs for fabric, etc. So there are sites online where you can actually just upload your designs. They get put on fabric and you can order your own fabric. Spoonflower is the, is the one that I know the most about. I don't know what else there is, but you can, you can do that. And you can also um, put your designs on all kinds of products from t-shirts to mugs to tote bags. And I've also done that. I've had my my designs on products that I sold in my store and but they were manufactured by a different company so it's print on demand and I'll show you a few of those designs so this is one a, a series that I did called RV happy I don't know if that's coming up very clearly I did a few of those here's another little nautical one and I did a Summer Bay Farm series with this little cute sheep. So those you can, you can create your own store, but that does require you to do your own marketing. And lots of people do well with that if you just keep working at it and you keep learning and you keep, you, you find the companies that are the best to work with and who produce a good product. And you can either um, just set the, your store up on their site, a lot of them, and then send your buyers right to their site or you can set your store up on your site with with uh, companies like Shopify or Equid or WooCommerce or whatever and have that right on your site and then you draw people to your site to 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 shop from you so that's that's actually a very fun way to do things but it isn't an overnight success kind of thing as it, basically none of this is you have to keep that in mind that it's you're not going to find overnight success by just putting your art out there. It requires a lot of marketing and it requires a lot of persistence and also working on your craft all the time, developing your skills, developing a portfolio, developing a whole body of work. So there's lots to think about. Um, moving on though, I'd like to go to number 13, which is publishing your own art books. So that's something that I've done as well. I've basically tried lots of things and I've, I've, Here's a few of the books that I've created that are available on Amazon. I self-published them. Um, this is sketches from the south of France. And the, these sketches are, it's a coloring book. And they're taken from when I actually lived in the south of France. So I, I just did, did small postcard size um, illustrations to color. And also then did one on Paris. So I've got a couple of those. And I've also done, um, I guess you could call it ins inspiration books. So this one's called the perfect, a perfect place. No, the perfect place, and it's just illustrations with uplifting kind of sayings. 
And I just used, I like working sm on small things. So I just, I did, I've done a couple of these books and you'll also find those on Amazon. Just look for my name. And then I did one one year where I did um, a series. Um, and this is another thing that's kind of goes under the same topic. Uh, I did a membership kind of program, a subscription to what I called the letterbox. And every month the subscribers got something in their email but also every now and then got something in the mail. So, and this is all, you know, either my own photos or my own illustrations that went into this book and it's still available on Amazon as well. So that was number 13. Um, number 14, I kind of, kind of cover, covered under licensing, but you can submit your art to art publishers whose sole goal is to do your is to create art and that that like I said that kind of falls under licensing so I'll just move on to number 15 and that is designing and manufacturing your own wholesale product lines and I've done that as well so what I did was I started out by by telling myself that I have done fine art I have had art in galleries and I decided I wanted to branch out into having a wider audience so the way I did that, because I love the whole giftware market, I designed my own product lines. And I started with easy print printable things, which I had printed fairly locally, and that these are um, shopping list pads. And I had a whole, several different series of those, and, and also um, notepad sizes, and then also um, note cards, and thank you cards and what else have I got here thinking of you kind of little note you'd send to somebody and then also gift enclosure cards which were also popular and I sold, sold those wholesale for several years and uh, and I so I went to the gift shows as then a seller or a vendor rather than um, a store owner or a shopper and for quite a while I had both a wholesale and a retail business and a lot of my own products and my own artwork went into those. So there's just kind of a rough overview of 15 different ways that you can make money with your art. If you are stuck in a rut where it has to be one way, then I would say um, you might want to branch out your thinking a little bit or you might want to just really go for it and really pursue what you really want. And but. But be aware that there are different ways sometimes to pursue marketing your art and selling your art in, in different venues and in different ways. And it might surprise you, for example, if you have um, if you have paintings in an art show, that you might be approached by someone who wants to license your work. And that happened to me. I was um, at a gift show in the U.S. and I had all my my designs when I was doing my wholesale business and someone approached me and said we we love your work we would like to license it and put it on other products and I said okay then so I hope you have found this useful I think um, there's like I said there's lots of different ways that you can you can support yourself with your art it's not an overnight thing you have to work your way up to making a decent income um, another way I didn't mention which is, I guess, kind of number 16, is YouTube videos. And if you're doing a lot of them and doing offering a lot that people like, you can become monetized on YouTube and make an income that way. And there's probably several that I haven't thought of or haven't tried yet, but that gives you some ideas that you can work with, and I hope that you find them really useful. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and uh, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.